comments. Okay, um, Judy, you want to bring the screen in? Um, I think Lynn uh, should introduce first. Fine. Lynn, would you introduce our speaker, please? I certainly will. It's a pleasure and an honor to introduce to you Dr. Linda Hawes Clever. Dr. Clever is a physician, author, motivational speaker, and the founder and president of Renew. Renew is a not-for-profit organization that aims to help people maintain and regain enthusiasm, effectiveness, and purpose as they resolve the competing imperatives of work and life. Dr. Clever's impressive medical career includes specialties in internal medicine, infectious diseases, community medicine, occupational medicine, and her work with HIV and AIDS in the workplace. Among her many, many achievements, she was chair of the Department of Occupational Health at California Pacific Medical Center, a professor and associate dean in the School of Medicine at Stanford University, the former editor of the Western Journal of Medicine, and the former chair of the Board of Trustees at KQED and Stanford and other places. She remains an active member of the National Academy of Medicine. Dr. Clever has written numerous papers, chapters, articles, and editorials, and she's author of a book, The Fatigue Prescription, Four Steps to Renewing Your Health, Energy, and Life. Excuse me, your energy, health, and life. And finally, on a personal note, I have known and admired Linda for 35 years. She's one of the most positive, optimistic people I've ever known. And with that, I turn it over to you, Linda. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, I would say the same to you and uh, in terms of admiration and uh, the care that you gave your father uh, and the thoughtfulness and the precision uh, of nursing that you provided over the years um, are, are really exemplary. So I, it's a pleasure to be in, in such good company. And with a lovely introduction, it, it reminds me of Lyndon Johnson once had an introduction like that. And he said, I only wish my parents were here to hear that. My father would have enjoyed it and my mother would have believed it. Um, so it's, it is um, lovely to be here. And um, I, I would also just add, um, let's see, is, there could be some slides coming, but what it basically is, is just an intro slide anyway. Um, I um, am a, a wife and a mother and a grandmother. Um, I, uh, at any time I could uh, naturally break into grand, grandchild stories. Ours are 11 year old twins and we're headed back to Baltimore for uh, the third time actually to help um, because our daughter is also an internist on the faculty at Johns Hopkins and um, the au pair is uh, going to, and she's a single mom and um, the au pair will be on vacation. So we're, we're headed back. I would just say that Renew that, that, that Lynn so uh, gracefully introduced, uh, we started almost 25 years ago um, after a series of, of tragedies, that, tragedies that happened in my life. And I, as I was recovering, I was looked around and saw that uh, a great number of people have uh, some very tough times in their lives. And uh, so started with John W. Gardner, who some of you have may have known or, or read his work. Um, um, great civil leaders had been, was secretary of HEW and so forth and so on, had talked about renewing. And so that's when we started Renew and learned how to do it by listening and listening and listening and uh, doing research of how people keep on going despite the things that inevitably happen in life. And I must say one of the, one of the moments is as we were starting Renew, um, um, I'd had a, a series of, of terrible, terrible things that had happened. And I had a friend, Paula John Turco, who was a classmate of mine, um, who kept calling and, and say, how are you doing? And I finally said, Paula, why do you call me? I'm not interesting. I have nothing to offer. I'm not sparkle plenty. Uh, I'm barely getting through the days and it had been deaths and losses and break-ins to our house and, and um, um, bad things. 
Um, and Paula said, I keep calling you because I am your friend. And I said, oh. And I had known about friends as um, companions and TGIFs and so forth. I hadn't known about that part of friendship. And I think that's one of the things that we've all so aware of is that part of friendship of staying and being connected. A phone call can make all the difference in the world at any time um, and especially now. Well, I just wanted to kind of set the scene for, for now. Uh, we know uh, about COVID and how, how dangerous it is. Uh, it, and it was sudden, it was ferocious, it was scary. And the re-entry is not clear um, how to go about it. And um, it was interesting, a couple, well, few, couple weeks ago, I guess, in the New York Times, someone likened the re-entry like a prisoner in jail who's scared about being released into the world again. Um, we feel that way, you know, and taking off your mask is kind of like revealing. Um, um, and so we, one of the things we need to do is what did we learn during this time that we liked doing? Uh, is it making bread? Um, is it Zooming with a family and friends? And actually, I think a fair number of people have found that it's kind of nice to be alone with yourself sometime. I was talking with a, a group of physicians uh, and, and one person said, I was so, 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 so busy. And I realized that I'd signed up for all that stuff and was whirling around because I wasn't sure I liked myself. And he said, and along came COVID and I had to be by myself. And he said, I like myself. I found that out and I wouldn't have found it out otherwise. Um, and so whatever we have discovered that's good during this time is something to think about. Oh, and I did want to say also, um, as George was talking about the, the chat, put it in the chat if you'd like, um, you might want to take some notes um, as we go along. And I don't mean to discourage you, <laughs> but this is really meant to be more of a participation than a presentation. So, um, uh, and do speak up. Um, let's see where we are with slides, Judy. We were talking about, um, so next slide. Uh, there was one before that. If, if, there might be one, but there's there it is. Uh, you've never been in this exact moment before, so you don't need to pretend like you know exactly what to do. And we were talking as during the time that people were gathering is that forgiveness is a very handy thing to have. Uh, if we're in a situation that we've never been before, how can we do it right? Um, so it's kind of letting loose of some of the expectations and some of the bonds, B-O-N-D-S, that we, we carry with ourselves because um, we think we're supposed to do this or that. Well, some days it's just good that we got through the day. Um, and so at a time like this, um, it's, um, I, I wanted to outline some more of the um, time like this. Um, we are also in climate change. And um, I was wondering, um, we could, is it possible to turn the slide off for a little while so we can see each other? I don't know if that works or is that too hard? Um, but how many people here um, were affected by the, the wildfires last year? Or you could put up your hand or uh, had that the orange noon uh, that so many of us had. Um, um, so at any rate. Yeah, we can't I do that. I made a mistake, and, and I, I, uh, I, in fact, stopped your video. You have to start your video again, if you would. Oh, that was okay. My, my oh. mistake. Okay, that's a, see, that's, it's okay with me, kiddo. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At any rate, that's Judy, I think. Yeah, um, I'm trying to get Judy off. There we go. But at any rate, um, so we have the wildfires. Uh, there are other things that are going on in our society besides COVID. Um, uh, for example, uh, Brian Stevenson has reported that 70% of the women who are in jail in the United States are single moms. And so you just have to think what's happening to their children. So that's going on while we're, while we're going through all of this. Um, Linda, we have a comment if uh, I can interrupt you. Sharon, you had something you wanted to say. 
Oh no, this was just mostly uh, agreeing with the impact of the wildfires. Uh huh. Well, it, so that that was that that hand up. Um, thanks. Uh, we're also dealing with um, uh, the unconscious racism that has been um, brought forward. I don't know if you have book clubs and so forth, but um, cast by Isabel Wilkerson, who had already won the Pulitzer Prize before cast. And another is another book to read is Strangers in Their Own Land by Arlie uh, Hochschild, who is, I must say, also a terrific, terrific speaker uh, of how people feel so um, mistreated and disengaged, not necessarily on the basis of race. The other thing that's coming along is this historic lack of trust in, in government, which is now extending to a lack of trust in each other. And what that happens, uh, when that happens, that leads directly to the feeling that nobody's got my back. Um, and that leads to anxiety, depression, and loneliness. And so as we're regrouping and looking forward to going back and getting back together, uh, we need to know that there are these undercurrents in our own sweet selves um, that we've been battered and bruised and, and we are going to have to work at recovery. It doesn't just happen. And the other thing that I've be, become aware of is that a fair number of people, understandably, have kind of gotten in the habit of whining and complaining. Um, I'm just saying that that uh, that it, they say, you know, whining and complaining and worry are kind of like a rocking chair. They keep you busy, but they don't get you anywhere. And so um, it's, it is a time to be paying attention to what we say and how we say it about each other and to each other. Uh, and weave in some of this, this forgiveness and patience that because We've never been like this before. Um, so um, the, the, uh, the other thing is um, that our brains are prepared, as, as you know, and you've heard, I know lately about fight or flight or freeze, um, but we're, we're not so good with uncertainty. And uh, just talking about that recently, how unsettling it is to be unsettled. We really like anchors and we're going to get to the anchors part. Uh, we're going to get to how you can remember your own anchors, but I'm just saying, just setting the, the trying to capture how at least a fair number of people are feeling. And then finally, um, I would say um, that uh, Musimbi Kenyoro, and some of, some of you know, may know about the Global Fund for Women, but she's been the immediate past president um, of, of the Global Fund for Women. And she and I were talking very recently, and she now lives she's back in Kenya. And we were talking about COVID and uh, how things are going. And she said, you know, oh, and I was saying, are you, are you going to plant your crops? Because she and her husband have a farm outside the town too. Um, and um, she said, no, we're not planting crops this year because of the locusts. And there's no sense planting crops for locusts to eat. And she said, you know, at times like this, the bottom sinks deeper. And so I think, again, we need to understand that in our society around the world, because we are a society, and in the United States, there are people in terrible, terrible distress. Uh, and the bottom does sink deeper. And so, uh, and how can we participate in, in elevating um, all, all of us? Um, so, um, the thing that I think that we need to know is that we do have resilience, we do have resources, we do have options. Uh, the future is brighter, it will get brighter. I, I'm not an optimist just by itself. I tend to be a tough-minded optimist. E even tough-minded optimists tend to irritate some people quite a bit. Um, but I do think that we have, we can find beauty, and we can find refined love, we can refine patience, we can refine good health. Um, and so that's what we're talking about. So next slide, please. Uh, and this is what Blaise Pascal said, in this difficult time, carry something beautiful in your heart. So what I'd like to do is next slide, just 
offer ourselves something beautiful to look at. And just look at that, green and water. Next. And imagine how far those magnificent birds have to fly. Next. Um, and someone may think they know where this is, and I would welcome comments in the chat uh, if anybody wants to uh, chime in and just um, don't don't panic about it. There just may, may be some entry. I'll tell you a little bit later where it is. But it's a nice place to be. And thinking about carrying something beautiful in your heart. Next slide. And so we are surrounded and we can find beauty and joy and all the things that we have liked. Uh, and at the same time, remember the challenges that, that we and, and other people face. And I, I think that you know, challenges are just simply opportunities. Um, so we've set the scene. Um, uh, next slide, please. Oh, did anybody say where? No, I didn't. I don't see that in the chat that anybody thought uh, they knew where that was. I'll wait a little while before I tell you the truth or remind me if I forget. I could forget at any moment. Um, so we're going to talk about how to be whole and healthy uh, now uh, and into the future. And the first thing is to um, revisit your values. I mentioned earlier, we don't like being unsettled. We don't like uncertainty. We're the fight. We're the flight. We're the freeze people, and we don't know what to do. And so now what we're doing is constructing ourselves some anchors so we don't feel like we're just battered and bruised and swept down this stream that we had nothing to do with creating. Next slide, please. So these, these are simply definitions of values um, that, that um, you can think about because I'm going to be asking you and uh, you, may or, you may even have a napkin that you'd like to write on or something like that. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to get to you pretty soon about your own values, but they are the inner guides that direct your behavior and underlie, underlie your attitude. Uh, and remember, you can choose your attitude. Um, Vic, I think many of you probably have read Viktor Frankl uh, man's search for meaning. And he was a psychiatrist who survived the Holocaust and his whole family was killed. And from the death camps, his experience in the death camps, he wrote, and he said, the last human freedom is the freedom to choose your attitude in a given set of circumstances. The last human freedom is the freedom to choose your attitude in a given set of circumstances. And again, uh, I mentioned caste and I remember, uh, mentioned uh, strangers in their own land. If you have a moment, and, and the Viktor Frankl book is in two halves, obviously two halves or not three halves, but at any rate, the first half is about his experience in the um, death camps and it's under a hundred pages and it will, it will change your life in terms of understanding how to live a life under the most difficult circumstances. The second half is about his um, logotherapy, which is uh, the psychotherapy that he developed. And it's a good book, it's a good read too. But anyway, there also values are the ideals and beliefs you won't give up no matter what. Um, uh, they're the basis of the meaning in your life, not of your life. I'm not qualified to talk about the meaning of life. Uh, meaning in life, when you have meaning in your life, that gives you a sense of joy. And so when you know your values and you live your values, that gives you meaning and that gives you joy. That's different from happiness. Um, I'm in favor of happiness. I'm really in favor of joy, which is the inner glow, inner glow that, that uh, comes out as you are settled with yourself and know that you're spending your time the way you want to. Um, and your values are the basis of your judgments, uh, right and wrong, good and bad, so forth and so on. Um, next slide, please. Um, so what um, I would like to do is, uh, before we talk about acknowledging distress, 
I would like, and if, if you could um, enter into the chat, and if you don't want to, that's perfectly all right, because I know what other people have said about their values. But I'm just going to take a minute of just some quiet and um, where you think about your values, uh, the things that you believe in, that you want to be, that you'd like to have years and years and years and years and years from now on your gravestone or in your obituary. He was always this, this, and this, or she was always like that. Um, and to think about your, your own values. So I'm just going to stop talking for just a moment while you think about that. And let me just say, aha, uh -huh, personal integrity. I see it now that I can see that. Fam personal integrity, family. Um, and there, there will be or could be more. And again, you may or may not, it's just, just for you to think about. Let me just say that um, uh, how you treat others and generosity and appreciation. There's generosity right there. Um, openness, faith. Um, there are many um, uh, other values, uh, kindness, uh, compassion, and so forth that, that people mention. And I will say, and it really, it interested me a, a lot that, um, and thanks, Kathy. Kindness and loyalty. Um, all, all, all of these are terrific, um, of course. And but that uh, personal integrity uh, was mentioned first. I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of people over the years, and on every list of values, honesty and or integrity has been there. Um, and I've come to think that it's because of it's not just how people want to be, it's also how they want to be treated. Um, so all these things are, and these, again, thank you everybody for lifting us all up with, with your thoughts. Um, so there is, there is actually homework now. Um, once you think of, of your values and you can write, there may be many, many, many more, then the idea is to edit them down to three or four or five, because you can't remember 25 values all at once, and to talk with your dear ones. And it could be who you walk with, it could be um, uh, at meals, it could be who you meet with, it could be at board meetings, it could be in your family, it could be in uh, on or off campus, on or off Zoom, but talk with people about their values. Um, because if they're their anchors, uh, then that is um, uh, good to know. They don't have to be identical. Uh, it's just to know each other's values. Um, and it's, I've been in situations where children have said, you know, dad, we don't need that new car. I'd much rather have you home. Don't be at work so much. I'd rather have you home. Don't get the car. We don't need to move. We don't need to get the new sofa. Just be home. They said the same thing to moms too. Um, so having conversations about these values is, is um, very important. Then you need to know uh, of uh, how to remember them. Yes, that's that's always a tough. I have a list of F words. Life is brought to you by the letter F, and it is not what you think it is. And two of my values are not F words. Uh, one is excellence, and another is kindness. Um, but my F words uh, are family, friends, faith, forgiveness, fun, and I could go on and on, um, naturally, well, I, you know, freedom, etc. cetera. Um, chocolate is naturally on the list, um, and people, you know, but how does that get on an F list? Well, could sometimes people say food, sometimes people say fattening, that kind of discourages me, um, but I think I like to think of fudge. So at any rate, so you have to think of how you're going to remember your values. And you could put them on post-it notes, you can put them on your screensaver, et cetera. Because 
Um, and I'm, I'm going to finish up very soon on values, but I wanted to say is when you know your values, then you can decide how to say yes or no at the right time, because all you have is time and time is love. So you have to figure out how you're going to spend that time and your values are what help you spend that time. And people have come to the realization that there are three ways that you can answer, you know, someone who said, oh, will you please just add this on? Would you please do this? Oh, you're so busy. I know, but you can get the job done better than anybody else. Um, you can say yes, you can say no, or you can say maybe. And the advice that I've been given by others is that maybe is the same as no. If you think maybe, then uh, that's it, say no. Um, so, because if you, if, if you don't set limits, you can't do anything well. And most of us really like to do things well. Um, and there, so we can go on from there. But any, are there any um, questions or comments at this point about values? George, I have on my screen something that says, the host has asked you to start your video and says later or start my video. Can I hit later or should I keep start my video? You're, you're fine now, so. Okay, so I'd like that, that note to go away because it so covers things. Fine. Try okay. click to click. Did you get it go away? No. Now it did. I hit later or never. Right. Maybe. I don't know what it was. At any rate, um, any comments or questions? So off we go. Uh, so we're still talking about being whole and healthy, and we'll we'll speed along here. Um, acknowledge your distress. And um, that's an interesting thing for those of us who've been through a lot and uh, are kind of tough um, and whether male or female, uh, it's the same thing, may not be willing to say that we're distressed or we're upset. Um, but I'm just here to say, that's the first thing is to be honest with yourself and whether it's distress or, or lonely or sad or whatever it might be, the first person to admit it to is yourself. And so you say it out loud to your, you know, in your own room, in your own, wherever you happen to be. But so your ears hear it because that's another way that the brain works is when you see something and when you hear something, and if you write something, and that's why I mentioned about taking notes, um, then it, you're more likely to absorb it. So, um, so say it to yourself. And what that does is that moves your distress from the from the amygdala and your amygdala i think you know about the amygdala a m y g d a l a amygdala and anxiety and anger all those words start with a um, and that's where that's where your your reptile brain is whirring and whirring and that's also where fear lies and many negative things but when you acknowledge that you're you're, you are distressed, it's like putting a spotlight on your amygdala and it moves the issue to the front of your brain where you can think about it um, your, to your executive um, portions of your brain in the, the frontal, prefrontal and parietal part. So it's just kind of, kind of a secret, but it doesn't need to be now that you can stop the whir, the negative whir by thinking of it, by naming it, by writing it down, by asking for help, by getting it out in public, just even your public and then you can start working on it and you can get the focus uh, that we're talking about. Um, next slide, please. Uh, notice what bug, bugs you. Uh, and the thing that's, uh, the things that bug you, uh, and it's again, this is all about acknowledging it, um, but the brain has a negative bias. And this has been very helpful uh, since the time of uh, the saber-toothed tigers and and the various giant uh, carnivores were were roaming the land and people, Neanderthals or Homo sapiens, whichever, were kind of huddled in their caves. It is not likely that a sound outside was some was the you know ice cream man uh, out selling uh, popsicles. It's very likely that a sound of a cracking bush outside was somebody coming to get you. And so the brain, we still have that negative bias. And so um, this is uh, it, when things 
bug you, um, notice it, talk about it, remind yourself, and um, uh, stop doing it as best you can. If going to that particular meeting bothers you every time, well, then don't do it. Uh, you can set limits. And the purpose, again, of setting limits is so that you can do something that you want to do and you're good at and that meet your values, uh, not just because you have to do something. Um, next slide, please. Notice how you're feeling. This is what we're talking about. And uh, I would say um, get help if you need help. Getting help is a sign of strength, not weakness. And uh, it could be your uh, physician, it could be a nurse practitioner, it could be a counselor, it could be a clergy person, it could be somebody who's always been there for you. Um, but you don't have to carry this alone. This is way, this situation that we're in with all these things that I mentioned are way too much for a person to bear alone. Um, and so what I'd like to do is just another bit of a pause and think about right now, what lifts you up, L-I-F-T-S, so that you have, if we're thinking about a backpack, um, and you'll probably be having some evacuation drills coming up and you'll have backpacks and go bags and all that. Well, this is your own go bag, your own backpack of what you're feeling and how something can lift you up. So I'm going to say, um, aha, here's some, someone, thanks her, said, putting the shoes of others. Um, yeah, you see, um, comparison, you know, how, how are you doing compared to like the Gaza Strip, Israel, Yemen, North Korea, um, places where there's India, where there's no vaccine. Uh, so comparing how you feel to someone else um, can, can lift you up. Uh, and the things that, that other things that lift you up, um, maybe it's calling somebody on the phone, um, uh, making a list of things to do and starting the list. Um, one of the things about starting a list is very interesting. You do something, if there's something you hate to do, hate to do, hate to do, um, you do it for two minutes. That, that's cleaning out the drawer or the closet or uh, writing that note that you don't really, work on it for two minutes, no more than two minutes. And then in a while you can work yourself up to maybe half an hour after, you know, could be days or weeks, depending on what you have to do. Um, so think about uh, what lifts you up. It may be just thinking about your favorite beach, um, maybe thinking what you're grateful for. Uh, we had a friend who <laughs> put post-it notes all over. And did you see where the fellow who invented post-it notes uh, had a terrific um, ob obituary of, of gratitude basically and, and his own persistence uh, in the paper this morning. Um, but she put post-it notes, she and her husband both thought about what they were grateful for. And they said, well, we have a roof over our heads. Uh, and another post-it said, uh, we have a cat and the cat likes us. Because you know, cats sometimes may or may not like you. Um, so anyway, post-it notes, travel memories, whatever lift you up because all you have is now um, to be yourself. And so as you gather all of these good things together, you're making your own um, nest, your own cocoon of, of positive things. And you have the power to make these decisions um, to lift yourself up. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and the last is being philosophical, which was a comment that I think was made, putting yourself in, in someone else's shoes. Uh, it could be worse. Yes, it could. Um, the son, an intern uh, once said to me, on the worst days that I have, and there are a whole lot of patients who are really sick and a lot of admissions, he said, I know the sun will come up tomorrow. And tomorrow will be a new day, gives a chance for a better day. The sun will come up tomorrow. The other bit of philosophical uh, bit that I kind of like is sometimes you're the pigeon and sometimes you're the statue. You know, you got, that's just the way it is sometimes. So at any rate, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we've been talking about kind of being aware of yourself and how things are going. 
um, this, this next part is taking good care of your actual self, your body. Um, um, next slide, please. And this is a big, big, big message that we found um, from Renew and all the research and the listening that we did it is not selfish to take care of yourself. It's self-preservation. So you can do what you need to do and what you want to do. Because you are a very important you. A lot of people depend on you and you may not know it, uh, but they do. Um, they're grateful for your smile. They're grateful for your, your ideas. They're grateful for your support. They're grateful because you have good times together with mahjong or bridge or bowling or walking. Um, a lot of people are grateful for you. Um, so um, take care of yourself. That's the big message. That's the big message. Um, so then we'll get into some practicalities about taking care of yourself. Next slide, please. One is sleep. Um, and <clears throat> it needs to be, yes, it does. It needs to be seven to eight hours. <clears throat> Excuse me, here, here comes some, this is my, this is my favorite mug and uh, my favorite tea, which happens to be Lady Grey. At any rate, um, seven to eight hours. Um, six won't last, you can't, you can't get by on six. And if you're getting nine or 10 hours of sleep, that's too much. And I don't mean to sound like I know what your life is like, uh, but those uh, seven to eight hours are something kind of magical about that with most people. And if it's too little or too much, um, then it's time to get some care. Um, when you get the right amount of sleep, it decreases errors. When you get the right amount of sleep, it increases your effectiveness. And um, I would say, uh, if we had time to chat, I would talk about chat. Um, bed is for two things. If anybody wants to enter into the chat, what the two things they're better for might be, might or might not be, but, but I, the two things are, of course, sleep and sex. Um, bed is not a place to watch murder mysteries. Bed is not a place to listen to the police reports um, and the, the fire department reports. Bed is not a place, um, bed is a place um, for peace and quiet and calm. A cuddle is maybe a very good idea with whatever warm is around. Um, that could even be a hot water bottle. But at any rate, that's about sleep. Next, please. Uh, eating. These are not surprising to you, but some of these things I will um, iterate. Uh, one of the things that's most important to know uh, was recently at American College of Physicians meeting, meeting is protein is what will make you feel full the fastest. So if you need a snack, uh, it is much better to have some, let's say, low-fat yogurt or um, um, chunk of low-fat mozzarella cheese. You know, they come that string cheese stuff. Um, rather than crackers, rather than a, a piece of bacon, rather than a donut, rather than, because protein will make you feel full. That's just how the eating hormones, and there are a lot of eating hormones having to do with your stomach, having to do with your brain, et cetera. So that's just one, one thing. Uh, chicken, uh, legumes, uh, those are all high protein things. Uh, tofu, it's hard to have a tofu snack, but you might have some marinated tofu around. I don't know, put a, you know, a teaspoon of, of, of um, Italian dressing on it or something like that, but that will fill you up faster than anything else that you could eat. All right, now we're going to have a quiz. Yes, this is a food quiz. What do these foods have in common. Don't do the next slide yet. Judy, don't do the next slide. Um, anybody got anything they want to put in the chat or we, if we could lip read? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna 16 jelly beans, a quarter cup of raisins, a half cup of grapes, a little less than two cups of apples, a little less than four cups of cherry tomatoes. What do they have in common? Carbo, that's true, carbo, yeah. Same amount of sugar, kind of. Yeah, that's about right. And it's right. Yeah, Barbara Creed, it, well, yeah, you're all right. And I'm gonna tell you how many calories that is. It's 100. I'll have 100 calories. So there are your choices, folks. 
Now there's some days you're going to want to have those 16 jelly beans for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I agree. Go jelly beans. Yes. And there's some days that you, you know, you might say, well, I had, I did my, <laughs> my jelly beans and I'm going to do some tomatoes, but anyway, good information to have. Um, all right. Um, next slide, please. Exercise. Now this is, I'm just going to, I'm just doing practicalities here. Um, the exercise uh, there are different kinds of recommendations, uh, but something like 120 to 150 minutes a week, if you can manage that, um, and of moderate exercise. And a kind of an interesting definition of moderate exercise, let's say if you're, you're walking or lifting weights, uh, that sort of thing, is you could talk while you're doing it, but you can't sing while you're doing it. So you don't have enough... Um, um, you're breathless enough so that you really couldn't sing, but you could talk. So um, that, that's just a definition of moderate. Um, next slide, please. And the exercise has several purposes, uh, and these are it. One, some of it's strength, you know, so you can open that jar, you know, holding those weights that you hold on to, even lightweight weights gives you strength in your fingers so you can twist the top off of those, those jars why do they put those and they sh put that shrink wrap plastic and you can't get out of them but you might be able to balance you get exercise for that for flexibility for endurance and for strengthening your bones and i'm not talking about jumping up and down uh, i'm not talking about weight bearing i'm talking about for strengthening bones lifting weights will strengthen your bones um, as well next slide please uh, and this is about breathing um, I talked about your reptilian brain and uh, how it can whir and whir and be so negative and it's gotten us through millennia but needs to be managed and we now know better how to manage it um, and I'm just going to suggest and, and actually we're going to do one of these breaths um, that uh, when you're in a situation that's tough uh, and it may be just um, have to do with finance and it may have to do with kids it may have to do with friends or uh, other relatives who are in trouble or you you yourself whatever uh or, or you're angry or you're upset all the things that that the amygdala is all about and and so forth it, it turns out as i said before you do have power and one of the powers you may have is over your breathing and i say may because i know that some people are short of breath um, and that's hard. And the, the whole message in the, the breathing is as you inhale and hold your breath for a while, try to have the exhale the longest period of time. So that inhale and holding it with the exhale is the longest period of time. Because what that does, uh, and again, I think you've probably heard this before, that turns on the parasympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. And that is your peace and calm center. Uh, the place where you can, again, move your fret toward the front of your brain, where you can start thinking about solutions and, um, and moving ahead. So what I'm going to suggest is um, to, and you can just sit quietly, you can um, shut your eyes or open your eyes, whichever you want to do. You may think while you're breathing, or you may just kind of go off and not think. Um, uh, so it, there, this, is, this is kind of a very um, relaxing of kind of thing to do. There are no have tos here, but the idea again is having the exhalation the longest. So you could, I'm going to do this, suggest that you breathe in for seven, and hold for, uh, sorry, in for four, hold for seven, and out for eight. And um, the eight should be, that's the, the long exhalation. And I'm gonna shut my eyes and I'm gonna do it. And you could try, if we had more time, we'd do it for three times. And we'd talk about how does that make you feel? And I will also say that some people, whether it's because of shortness of breath or other situations, don't like this at all. So you don't, this is not a have to, it's just an experiment. This is a time uh, with all the things that are going on to explore and to discover and to try something new. So this may be one of them. So um, in for four, hold for seven and out for eight, and I'm gonna do it.
and I actually did it twice. Um, so we'll we'll talk more about um, breathing in a little while also. And I don't know if anybody wants to say uh, in the chat or somehow um, how that made you feel. Um, but it, it can be kind of interesting. And here are some messages that you can give to yourself. Thanks, Judy. Um, as you breathe in, you can say let, and as you breathe out, you can say go. Breathe in, you can say calm, and out, you can say down. And all those pairings, um, and Janet Meiselman and I have worked on this and others, um, may just give yourself a kindly message uh, that you can use um, as you settle in. I did want to say um, and slide off. Well, I was going to come back to that. Um, could we? Well, we can. But let's. Yeah, let's just. If we could have the slide off, and that may work for a while. Because I just wanted to add a couple of other things. Uh, one is uh, take your medications. Uh, I presume you all have uh, dose boxes. Um, another is uh, get your shots. Um, and I understand uh, people who hesitate, no wonder, because science is really hard to understand because you get this advice and you get that advice and then you get that advice. And that's because discoveries have been going on and along the thing uh, all the time. The thing that's interesting about the COVID shot in particular is that it was not overnight. Your tax money for the last 30 years have allowed the National Institutes of Health Research to go on and to be understanding the genome and to be understanding the immune system and to be understanding B cells and T cells. This has gone on for 30 years. And then along comes COVID. And developing the vaccine is like just putting some extra, the last pieces in the puzzle. You've done jigsaw puzzles and you know, you've got the edges, you know, the whole bit. And so this is not an overnight triumph. It seems fast because the, all the other pieces were already there. Um, the other thing is the reason it went fast and this did go fast, it was because there was so much COVID around that it was easy to tell if somebody got a shot and the second shot or depending on which preparation it was, it was easy to tell if they got sick or not because everybody's getting sick. But if some people didn't get sick and if those are the people who got the shot, huh, that means something. So when the prevalence of an of infectious disease is high, it's easy to find out quickly uh, in just months um, using the still thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people, you can find out quickly if, if, it, if, the, if, if the vaccine works. Um, so I also did wanna say about practicalities is you do need to, well, we don't know when we're gonna to have to get um, um, boosters for, for this, probably will, don't know, not sure. We'll know more in a few months when the people who got, who were in the early trials, they'll be testing their antibodies. Uh, let's see, it says, please put backup slide on. I can't read the rest of that note, but do it, do what he said, Judy, just do what he said, make this guy happy. Um, <laughs> oh, that one? Is that what the, the slide that people wanted? Well, any rate, uh, but I did want to just say um, uh, a couple more um, uh, practicalities uh, is, hold on. Well, uh, is about, oh, that, that the flu shot is every year. Shingle shot, if you're over 50, uh, you really need to get, and there's two shingle shots. And the second shingle shot is, uh, can be a bear. But shingles can cause blindness. Shingle can cause permanent crippling pain syndromes that are so bad that people want to commit suicide. A shingle shot, uh, get a shingle shot. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and so this is another thing to think about is, and we kind of talked about before, what good has happened because of COVID? This is something that, you know, we were talking about that earlier before everybody came online. Um, is uh, we learned about Zoom. I know someone, this is a true story. The family now Zooms every night 
And the mom, and grandma, great grandma, great grandma, same person, is 96. And she is pulling up stakes and moving to New York because she wants to be part of the action. And her kids who live back there. And this all came about because the family was, was doing the Zoom. Um, so, but you might have seen more of nature. Uh, you might have uh, lost some weight. You might have cleaned out a closet. I found a um, um, belt from Syria that, that we got and that I thought I had mistakenly downsized. Um, and then I got to thinking about the tragedy of Syria, but nonetheless, uh, you've met neighbors and so forth. Um, next slide, please. And this is for you. And we're, we're just going to speed along um, because I, there, there should be time for Q&A. Um, the first thing is to let go uh, as you're thinking about uh, what you've discovered or what is burdening you. Um, uh, the next slide, please. First thing to do is to let go of rumors. See, this is one of the things as people I'd mentioned early, some people have kind of gotten in the habit of whining and complaining. Uh, some people have gotten in the habit of spreading rumors. I cannot think of what good rumors do. Um, so you might think of good rumors, but I can't think of good rumors. So, um, so give them up. Uh, the next thing is, um, well, uh, let me also say about uh, rumors that um, you can look at Snopes. I don't know if anybody knows about Snopes, S-N-O-P-E-S dot com. Uh, you hear an, an unlikely thing, you can go to Snopes and they'll tell it the truth. You can also go to fact check, all one word, factcheck.org, and that will help with rumors. And uh, the Washington Post, WAPO, also has a fact checker. Uh, that you can get some information about. If you're hearing things that don't make sense, you can go there. Disinformation is a little bit different. Um, disinformation is the deliberate spreading of lies. Um, and uh, some approach to that is to choose reliable sources like universities. Um, like the CDC, like PBS, uh, reliable sources. And the other thing is on, on any source from a friend or from anybody you hear, ask where they got the information. Where, and if they, someone says, well, I got that from the internet. Well, where on the internet? Was it the Mayo Clinic or was it something else? Um, so we're asked, it's fair to ask where people got that information. And just one other thing about news and disinformation. Um, it has been found that people who stick to the news all day long, um, that in itself can cause anxiety and distress and depression and so forth. And one answer is 15 minutes a day. Um, another is read the newspaper at night, not the first thing in the day. Um, and those seem kind of shocking, but, um, people can get very distressed by, by the news. And I do see the time, um, next time, next uh, slide, please. Let go of, of being perfect. Um, our daughter says, po buddies nerfect. Um, and I uh, appreciate that. Perfection um, can really drag you down. This is a good time for good enough. Next, please. And let go of grudges. Um, forgiving yourself, Forgiving others frees you, F-R-E-E-S, frees you and your soul to do new things. Um, it may or may not help the person you forgive, but it will help yourself because it will give you more energy and more freedom. Um, and I think that I should stop here because I know what time it is. And there are a lot more things. Let me just show you what else we could talk about. Um, Judy, let's just whiz through these. Um, we talked about let go, kind to yourself, pause, pause. Let me stop at pause and then that will be the last thing. This is what you do. And I thank Janet Meisland for this. When you pause, and it could be while breathing, it could be you pause before you're about to say something. It could be you pause before you're about to do something. Think to yourself during that time. 
is what I am about to say or do, will it help or will it harm? You have the power to make that decision. Will it help or will it harm? And then you can choose to say or not say what you were going to say or do, or you can change what you were going to say or do, or you could pause some more, or you could say, I'll get back to you later. Or you could say, give me a day to think about that. Or you could say, let's take a break. Um, so the pause is right up there with taking care of yourself. Self-preservation is not selfish. That's a big message along with the breathing today. And I would say, stay curious. There may be one more thing, because if you stop learning, you stop living. Uh, and again, ask what does it for me every time. And you've already done that uh, by thinking of what lifts you up. Um, so all of those things are forever. The say thank you, um, for others rather, um, you can say thank you. Um, Salamat is how you say thank you in uh, Tagalog. Um, Gracias is how you say it in uh, Spanish. Shukran is how you say it in Arabic. Good to learn all those things. Next, if there's whatever there might be, Judy, let's, we'll take potluck as we run out, run out of time. Oh yes, this is the last slide. And I love Edith Wharton, a great novelist. In spite of illness, in spite even of the arch enemy sorrow, one can remain alive long after the usual date of disintegration. She was Edwardian, everybody disintegrated. If one is unafraid of change, insatiable in intellectual curiosity, interested in big things and happy in small ways. And some days you can just be happy in small ways. Other days you can do the whole Megillah. So I thank you for coming. I thank you for being. I would love it if you wrote. Uh, I would love it that we do have a website. Um, we're, we're gonna be revising it. All websites are meant to be revised. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you one way or the other and, and I'm here. So thanks, Lynn, Judy, um, everybody, all, all that you do, George, thanks. Well, thank you, Linda. Um, I have one last question that I'll just throw in. Uh, one of the things that wrestles in, in the real life is the distinction between things that happen to you like physically, okay? Like you, 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 you have some sort of a physical condition, many of which are not gonna change as one gets older, uh, and things that are external to you. Uh, and I think of the fires and the, and the pandemic as being to some extent external. And then I think of the whole political nonsense that we've gone through as being very external, but doesn't mean it doesn't affect us. Uh, could you reflect for a moment or two on the things you have found most valuable for the things that happen to you personally, as opposed to the things that are external? Thanks, that's a profound question. Um, how much time do you have before lunch? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, I think, uh, when things, first of all, let me just make the point that the neck, there's a reason for your neck. Uh, it connects your head to your body. And so when your body isn't feeling well, uh, it, the information flows right back up into your brain. And so, and, and also when you hear something outside that's external, that's upsetting, it also, the neck is the one that carries the news back down to your stomach, let's say, and get your stomach upset or um, get you the ulcer or get you the, the, the back pain is worse or whatever. So we are whole people with this, this, these wonderful messengers and messages that flow uh, back and forth. Um, I think when it's yourself, and I, I guess I'd be speaking as a physician um, here as well, um, is it's very important to know that you're not alone. Um, and that uh, if your body is um, causing you distress, it, it's, it's really important to get help. Um, and it may be that the help that you need is from a physician, regular old physician, uh, it may be it's from a counselor. It may be from clergy. It may be from a friend. Uh, it may be that you learn some techniques like 
breathing or meditation or you or um, book or you do something for yourself. Um, I think yourself really it this is such a shocking concept. Um, yourself is uh, extremely important. And however, so you have permission to take care of yourself. But the other part of it is so interesting is that, and for example, getting COVID shots or flu shots or, or, or following traffic rules, it's also for other people to keep other people healthy too. And so I'm again, stretching your, your question a bit, but it's something following the traffic rules like fastening your seatbelt or stopping at stop signs, um, that's not socialism, that's just, community that's so you're not going to run over a nine-year-old kid who's riding through on his bicycle and hadn't you didn't stop um and it and it's the same with some of these p other public health things um like you can't drink endlessly because you lose your judgment well then that's for everybody but that's not socialism that's just good sense that's building community because we're human beings but back to yourself and if you're not feeling good i would say is assemble your allies assemble the people who can help you out and work together on your, your symptoms. Um, but knowing that how your brain is feeling will affect how your body feels too. Fascinating. Um, so the final question for me anyway is what lake were we looking at? Oh, Fallen Leaf. Okay. Fallen Leaf Lake. Uh, right adjacent to Lake Tahoe. Ah, okay. What did other people, other people thought Donner? Don't know. But okay. anyway, that's, that's been another common, but that's, that's from, from mountains up right. above Fallen Leaf Lake. Well, uh, Linda, we can't thank you enough. This has been wonderful. And uh, we wish yes, you thank and your, you. your group the best in terms of communicating to others. So, Thank you. Honored to be an honor to be here. With great joy and, and love. And uh, we're going to get through this. Oh, absolutely. We will. Great. Okay. Uh, that's it for everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.